Prince Gustav and Princess Karina of St. Wittgenstein Barlberg attend a festival in Germany. King Frederick X and Queen Mary of Denmark attend a welcoming ceremony in southern Denmark. Queen Camilla of the United Kingdom attends a celebration in London. And King Jimne Kesar Wongchuk and Queen Jetson of Bhutan begin their state visit to Mongolia. All this and much more coming up next on your Royal Daily News. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you all are doing well today. If you're new to my channel, my name is Alexandra, and welcome to your Royal Daily News for Tuesday, July 9th, 2024. On Monday, Their Majesties, King Jimne Kesar Wangchuk and Queen Jetson of Bhutan arrived at Genghis Khan International Airport to begin their historic eight-day state visit to Mongolia at the invitation of the President, Herlesuk Okna. As I mentioned several weeks ago, this is the king's first state visit to Mongolia since the two countries established diplomatic relations in January 2012. The purpose of the visit is to strengthen bilateral and economic ties between the Kingdom of Bhutan and Mongolia. Upon their arrival, their majesties were warmly welcomed by the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Mongolia and other government officials. In the afternoon, their majesties arrived at the state palace in Ulaanbaatar, where they were welcomed by the president of Mongolia and the first lady. Thereafter, the president gave a speech to officially welcome their majesties to Mongolia. This was followed by the inspection of the guards of honor, the playing of the national anthems, and holding a moment of silence, as well as bowing in front of the seated statue of Genghis Khan, the founder of the Mongol Empire. This morning, the king and the president held a meeting inside the state palace, and during the meeting, they agreed that the king's state visit is important for determining the prospects of cooperation. According to a press release from the government of Mongolia, it noted that despite the geographical distance, the king and the president emphasized deep historical and cultural ties. Quote, confident that this state visit will enhance past achievements. Additionally, landlocked developing countries, they've committed to turning their geographical disadvantage into an advantage, fostering unity and partnership to overcome common challenges and work towards sustainable development. The heads of state decided to support the activities of the International Research Center for Landlocked Developing Countries and to work together for the development of development policies for landlocked developing countries. The joint declaration issued as a result of this visit is a roadmap for the development of sectors such as politics, economy, education, culture, health, science, agriculture, animal husbandry, environment, tourism, exchange of citizens, and cooperation. It has been decided to implement the abundant resources to expand cooperation in the education and culture sectors and to include students in the scholarship program. In order to expand people-to-people exchanges, the national brand Go Mongolia has been aligned with the national brand Bhutan Belief. The heads of state will work together to contribute to global efforts to combat climate change and protect the environment. End quote. After the meeting, the king and the president witnessed the signing of three memorandums of understanding and cooperation in the fields of agriculture, animal husbandry, culture, education, health, publishing, and digital information. On Wednesday, their majesties, as guests of honor, will attend the opening ceremony of the 2024 Nottam Holiday Day. In Luxembourg City, the Khul Grand Ducal announced that the swearing-in of His Royal Highness, Hereditary Grand Duke Guillaume of Luxembourg, as Lieutenant Representative, will take place at the Palais Grand Ducal on October 8, 2024. Prior to the swearing-in, His Royal Highness, Grand Duke Henri of Luxembourg, will sign the Grand Ducal Decree of Appointment. On June 23, 2024, his Royal Highness, the Grand Duke of Luxembourg, announced that he was handing over his official duties to the hereditary Grand Duke of Luxembourg, 
during his National Day speech at the Luxembourg Philharmonie. The Grand Duke is not abdicating. Yet. If you're interested in learning more about the Grand Duke's announcement and what it means, in the top right, do you see it right here? Right there. And in the description box below is my full original report about the Grand Duke's announcement. In Brussels, His Majesty King Philippe of the Belgians held an audience this morning with the President of the Flemish Parliament, Ms. Lisbeth Hommens, ahead of Flemish Community Day. In London, His Majesty King Charles III of the United Kingdom presided over an investiture ceremony at Buckingham Palace. During the ceremony, the King presented the Order of Companions of Honor to Dame Shirley Bassey for her services to music. Meanwhile, Her Majesty Queen Camilla of the United Kingdom, as patron, celebrated the 30th anniversary of the National Literacy Trust charity held at Clarence House. In North Wales, His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, as Honorary Air Commodore, visited the RAF Valley this afternoon, where he met with members of the RAF Mountain Rescue Service. Just outside the city centre of Barcelona, Her Royal Highness, Princess Leonor of Asturias, and Her Royal Highness, Infanta Sofia, Spain, visited the art studio of Catalan sculptor, Mr. Jauma Blenza. The visit is held in connection with the 2024 Premios Princesa de Girona, which will take place on July 10th at the Palacio de Congresos Costa Brava in Lloret de Mar. Born in Barcelona in 1955, Mr. Plenza's work is displayed in various galleries in the United States, Asia, and in Europe. According to the Royal Court of Spain, during the visit, the princess and the Infanta had a chance to view firsthand Mr. Plenza's, quote, industrial and creative process, which seeks to introduce beauty into people's daily lives by impacting public space, transforming it, and creating a dialogue between the artistic and the urban, end quote. The princess and the Infanta also had the privilege to view his latest sculpture as well as other projects. Just on a side note, I love his work. I really do. Genius. If you're interested in the description box below, I'll go ahead and leave a direct link to Mr. Blenza's official website. Anyway, moving on. In the mid-afternoon, Their Majesties, King Felipe VI and Queen Letizia of Spain, accompanied by the Princess and the Infanta, participated in an informal meeting and celebration with the previous winners of the Premios Princesa de Girona in Lloret de Mar. The meeting was held on the occasion of the 15th anniversary of the Fundación Princesa de Girona. On Saturday in Larvodo, His Serene Highness, Prince Albert II of Monaco, Her Serene Highness, Princess Stephanie of Monaco, Miss Pauline Ducrole, and Miss Camille Gottlieb attended a gala on the occasion of the 20th anniversary of Fight AIDS Monaco, held inside the Salle des Etoiles at the Sporting Monte Carlo. Established in 2004 by Princess Stephanie, Fight AIDS Monaco is a nonprofit organization that supports individuals living with HIV. Quote, Fight AIDS Monaco aims to be a privileged space where each person living with HIV can express themselves freely, where everyone will find a space to try to talk about this virus and its consequences. End quote. On Sunday, Her Royal Highness, Princess Caroline of Hanover, and Her Royal Highness, Princess Alexandra of Hanover, attended the final of the 2024 Jumping Entre Nationale de Monaco, held in Port Hercule. After a successful eight-day official visit to Greenland, Their Majesties, 
King Frederick X and Queen Mary of Denmark arrived at the town hall in Kostin in southern Denmark this afternoon to attend a welcoming ceremony hosted by the mayor, Eric Laritzen. For the next several weeks, their majesties, along with their four children, Crown Prince Christian, Princess Isabella, Prince Vincent, and Princess Josephine, will take up residence at Kostin Slot. At this time, it is unknown if there will be a traditional summer photo session at Kostin Slot with members of the royal family of Denmark, as well as with members of the same wittgenstein barlberg family. On Sunday, their serene highnesses, Prince Gustav and Princess Karina of St. wittgenstein barlberg and her royal highness, Princess Benedicte of Denmark, attended the final day of the annual Barlberg Shooting Festival held on the Schützenplatz in Bad Barlberg, Germany. Organized by the shooting club Barlberg 1838, the three-day shooting festival is one of the oldest in the Wittgenstein region of Germany. The festival begins on Friday with the traditional free beer. In a press release, it noted that one of the main ideas behind the founding of the club was the free beer. Quote, the reason for this was the pronounced social divide in the 19th century. The gap between the poor and the rich was large. Once a year, for the duration of the shooting festival, this was to end. An equal entrance fee was set for all men, which meant that there was no beer to buy. This meant that the rich could not show off, and the poor were not hurt in their self-esteem and pride. End quote. After the free beer, guests attended a concert on Gotaplatz, marking the start of the shooting festival. Following the concert, guests walked to the courtyard at Schloss Berlberg to, quote, welcome the riflemen participating in the festival at nightfall for the Grand Tattoo. On Saturday, day two, the shooting competition took place at the Schützenplatz. On the final day of the festival, known as Schützenfest Sunday, began with a grand parade through the town of Bad Barlberg, which included numerous brass bands and marching bands, as well as members from other shooting clubs from nearby towns. The parade ended at Schloss Barlberg, where, quote, respects were paid to the prince and princess, end quote. Thereafter, the parade moved to the Schützenplatz. While on the Schützenplatz, the prince and princess and Princess Benedicte led the traditional Polonaise. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for joining me this afternoon. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. I will be back tomorrow on Wednesday, July 10th, with all the latest world news and events. Until then, I sincerely wish each and every one of you a wonderful afternoon. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Comment below if you like, and click on the notification bell so you won't miss a new episode. Have a wonderful afternoon, everyone and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.